Hi class, my name is Jabari Mitchell and this is going to be my presentation on LeBron James and Michael Jordan and why they both should be respected in their own eras and shouldn't be put to a who's the greatest of all time. They're both great in their own eras. Uh, so first of all, basketball is a global sport which brings together millions of fans every single year. The most popular and highest levels of the sport happen in the NBA right here in the United States. Um, fans and analysts from all across the globe come together to talk about the sport and argue their favorite points and about their favorite players. <clears throat> There's many analysts on TV who will argue and banter about which team is better, which player they think should be crowned as the greatest of all time. One player who's been at the uh, center of this debate recently is LeBron James. Uh, previously, most people had agreed that Michael Jordan had been the greatest player of all time. People continuously fight about this subject, and everyone has their own opinions about which player is better, or if one would be able to play in the other's era, <clears throat> um, or just which one is better. But I think that both of these players should be res regarded as the greatest of their own respective eras, and the debate should just stop at that. <clears throat> um, so my first point is, um, they play in totally different eras. It was a different game back then. Back then, players would have a really physical style of play that the referees would allow to go on. So it was just a more physical game. The fouls that they would commit back then, they would call them flagrant fouls today, which is really bad. But back then, it would just be a normal foul, and you'd just have to pick yourself up and keep moving. So people like to go back and forth a lot about could they play in each other's eras. We can't even, we can't even know that because we've never seen them play in each other's eras. We don't want to know how they'd be able to do it. Or if they would be able to overcome the more physicalness of back then, or if you know there's more jump shooting now, I don't know if Michael Jordan would be able to um, stay stay up to date with uh, today's game. So we really can't know based off of that. Uh, my second point is um, they both had different help and they both had different competition. When you're comparing these two players, the subject always arises about how much a basketball player had on their team, how much help they had on their team, and how much competition they had to face throughout their career. LeBron James has had superstar players on his team for each of his four championship runs except one. This leads many to believe that he can't win without the help of other superstars, when in reality he was the best player on every team that he ever won with. Michael Jordan, on the other hand, had the help of only one All-Star in his six championship runs. This only tells half the story, though, because in that one year he took off to pursue a career in baseball, his team still won 55 games, so they still did all right without him. <clears throat> this leads some people to believe that the players who we played with were actually a lot more skilled than they get, uh, than they get credit for. Um... Basketball is, after all, a team sport, and if one player is lacking in one position, it's not fair to assume that that one player can just step up and guard everyone on the court. <clears throat> it takes five to win a game. And my last argument, I'd say, is uh, they're completely different positions, they're, and they have completely different styles of play. Michael Jordan is a 6'6 shooting guard at, um, who weighed 216 pounds, and LeBron James, on the other hand, was a 6'9", 250-pound small forward. If they stood side by side, you'd immediately see the difference. Michael Jordan's style of play was to be the alpha in every game. He would take a large amount of the shots, and he always wanted to take that last shot. <clears throat> he had a dogged mentality that he was going to beat you one way or another, and his teammates were just fine to play, just play their roles and get out of his way. He was that good. LeBron, on the other hand, has always been a pass-first player meaning that if the other team would double-team him because he's getting too hot, he's going to make the right pass, and he's going to pass it to somebody who's open. <coughs> this made him a really great player because he was able to inspire his teammates that they're just as important as he is with winning the game and made it more of a team sport. He inspires his teammates to play better, and that's how he wins the games. So <clears throat> these players are usually both the best of their respective eras, and to say that one is better than the other is just fruitless speculation. And looking at the amazing legacies that both of these players leave behind, I just wonder how long it will be until we can all look back and just appreciate the greatness that we had the chance to witness. No one player's legacy eclipses the other. 
They all have different stories, different timelines, and come in different shapes and sizes. As current Washington Wizards star Russell Westbrook said, I was a champion once I made it to the NBA. I think this quote really embodies the bigger picture of what we watch when we watch the NBA. All these players are really champions in all reality. <clears throat> so pick your favorite player, pick your favorite team, stick with them through thick and thin. Thank you.